his darling little girl team up to biatch slap critical race theory. When the collected African-American families in this country remember that there is nothing stronger or more resilient than the black family, mom, dad, and children, then there will no longer be, when they remember, any need for such garbage as critical race theory or social justice handouts. I'm Dr. Duke, just Katie, and this is The Dr. Duke Show. Hello everyone and welcome to the Dr. Duke Show, the only program that keeps you educated on the craziness impacting K-12 classrooms and colleges around the world. Today, today's show is sponsored by Mike Lindell and our friends at MyPillow. We've all seen the negative press directed at Mike since he's publicly supported Donald Trump, publicly supported the Constitution, publicly supported free and open election results. Well, why not stick it to the left and buy from an American patriot? My pillow not only created the most comfortable pillow you'll ever own, but they've developed bed sheets and towels and bathrobes and doggy beds and all sorts of things that you can't even imagine right now. You'll save up to 66% when you go visit mypillow.com and use the promo code Dr. Duke. That's D R D U K E, one word, D R D U K E. Mike Lindell is a great pay patriot and we need to support these kind of businesses he likes what we're doing and conservative media of all kinds so he supports us again use the code dr duke to save at mypillow.com and help us out we found a way to make a little money that has nothing to do with facebook can't be uh, banned by twitter please patronize them and help us to grow today we start with a really heartwarming fantastic beautiful black father and a his darling little daughter talking about why we don't need critical race theory, why we need to teach people, treat people like people that look, what a, what a wholesome message from this young African-American family. You can be what you wanna do. You work hard, you can be whatever you wanna be in this country. That is something that the white liberals who are pushing this, cre this CRT garbage, especially on black families, they don't believe it anymore. White, elite, rich, primarily men and women, white people, who've already got theirs, telling black people they can't get theirs because white people like them are too racist. Let's look at this wholesome message. Put, it restores your faith in America. This is what we need more of as a people. Daddy teaches you can be anything in this world that you want to be, right? Don't daddy teach you that? Yeah, and it doesn't matter if, if you're black or white or any color. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, brown, yellow, yellow, right? Black. And and how we treat people is based on who yeah. they are and not and what color nice. they are. And if they're nice and smart. See? This is how this is how children think right here. Critical race theory wants to end that. Not with my children. It's not going to happen. My baby's going to know that no matter what she wants to be in life, all she has to do is work hard and she can become that. Work hard even though you don't know anyone, you can make friends. <laughs> yeah, you can make friends, no matter what color they are. So we need to stop CRT, period, point blank. Children do not see skin color, man. They love everybody. If they're good people, they love them. Now that's the message from Corey Yeshua, and he posted that with his daughter on his TikTok uh, profile, I guess, and it got more than 20,000 videos you know, views on that platform, and he has 270,000 followers. I'm not quite sure how the TikTok works, but then once this message got out, it went viral, and you can see exactly why it went viral, because guess what? Just like the daughter says, just you can be nice to people, and if you're nice to people, it doesn't matter what color they are, just be nice and you'll make friends and, and obviously, you'll get along. This is not just some naive little black child who doesn't know how evil the world is. This is an adult father who's made his way. This is a family. They've, they've carved out a life for themselves in America. We all deal with problems. We all deal with idiots, but there's soundness. And you know maybe we should have expected it. His last name is Yeshua, which is, of course, the Jewish, the Hebrew word for Joshua, which is Jesus, right? Yeshua bar Yosef is the son of God, Jesus. And so with a last name like Yeshua, you wonder, you're not surprised why this little girl's getting that kind of an upgrade, uh, uh, that kind of an education. While so many of her peers are being talked down to, condescended to, and warped into thinking that everybody with slightly lighter skin color wants to hold them back. So as we can clearly see, all you have to do is be nice to people. 
And that little girl reminds me, remember the office, remember Daryl's daughter? Yeah. She she, she, she reminds me just like that, that little, little kid. Bit. Very. That, you can just see how vivacious and infectious that little kids like that are. And that's the thing that I will say to the public schools out there. I, I don't know what you're thinking. This is how our kids come to you. Our kids show up in your classrooms in kindergarten and first grade and second grade and third grade and they're, they're in love with life. They're in, they, they see possibilities where you and your warped faculty see a prep, uh, prejudice and, and, and hindrance and hatred. They see love. For God's sake, why are you taking those little kids and turning them into haters like yourselves? Why are you taking those worldviews that you saw on display right there and turning it into suspicion and, dis and hatred? You Again, if there is is one thing, one way in which the worst haters of white people have correct that white liberals like you who run the schools, they're exactly right about you. You hate everything. You're, I'm not going to stop and say you hate black people. You hate everyone. You hate joy. You hate love. You hate innocence. You, everyone has to share your warped conspiracy theories about race and systemic this and systemic that. Well, thank God for Yeshua and his family. And, and he's, he said it. I'm not going to let you do that to my daughter. Liberal, liberal, white administrators of schools. You have a moral obligation to listen to him. He is the purpose. African-American families, African-American men like that, they are the purpose of your critical race the theory. He's telling you to go pound salt. So let's say you're going to go off to college and you decide that you would like to major in the classics and specifically you're going to Princeton University and you're going to major in the classics. Well, there's good news. You don't even need to know Latin or ancient Greek for the classics because, you know, systemic racism. So, of course, we must cancel that. Now, Princeton decided they were going to eliminate the classics track of the classics department. Um, it, and that had required an intermediate proficiency in one of the two languages before entering the actual track. Makes sense. Okay. That's, but uh, not anymore. So they approved removing that requirement that the students take either language as part of the major at all. Like, you don't even have to be proficient because you don't even have to take it now at all. But, hey, it's a good thing. Did you know that? It's a good thing because Professor Josh Billings, who's the director for undergraduate studies and is with the department, he said that, Faculty are looking at this as an improvement to the department yeah. since it will, quote, add new perspectives. Yeah. End quote. You, like, like people who can't speak the ancient language. Yes. Yeah. He said having people who come in who might not have studied classics in high school. <laughs> okay. Duh. Uh, and might not have had a previous exposure to Greek and Latin. We think that having those students in the department will make it a mo more vibrant intellectual community. And this is the dishonesty, right? You're saying that, and you're right. Because no kid will come, almost no kids will have come to college anymore knowing Greek and Latin, and almost none of them, thanks to radicals in charge of education, will ever have read the classics. But why don't you require they learn the language? Look, if you're going to be a classics major, and every kid has got to learn a language anyway at a, t a college, why can't you require them, as they're studying the classics, all these inner city kids that you think you're going to get, all these non-Western kids and black inner city kids, all these Hispanic first generation American kids who are just dying to go to Princeton and study the classics. You're right, make them teach, learn the language as they go. They got to take a language anyway. No, this is not that at all. What you've done is you've basically said, look, languages are hard to begin with. Like mathematics, kids fall down at languages. So let's just throw that out of there. Let's do all the classics. Let's read all the classics in English translation. In other words, let's become the English department. Ah, well, well, right, yeah. In, in addition to what they're doing with the classics no longer being the classics, the p politics department added a race and identity track to right. theirs. So, so okay, so you, we're, we're a classics department that's really an English department that doesn't do the classics except in English translations, and, and now we're going to turn it into a race, class, and gender. This really is yeah, an English department That's the, the politics department. Yeah, yeah. and in the religion department, they're going to make it so you have two streams. You can go with traditions of religion and then themes. 
Yeah. You can Fe- feminism and religion, yes. mar- environmentalism, queer theory and religion. Here here's the uh the kicker on this whole story. The Princeton Alumni Magazine had reported that the school had wanted to make the changes for some time, but they were given this new urgency to make these changes because of Princeton president Christopher Eisgruber. Remember Mr. Eisgruber? I do, yeah. Heil uh, de Waffen SS Eisgruber mm-hmm. at Princeton. We will make sure that you will study Norse mythology and Wagner. We are not reading the Greeks and Romans. It's very non-Nazi. Well, Heil Eisgruber. Well, Ice Gruber had made a call to address systemic racism and the events around race that occurred. By that, I mean not enough Aryans coming to our school. We will control the curriculum. We will rise again, the Fourth Reich at Princeton University. This is the same Ice Gruber who said that, yes, Princeton is racist. And then the Justice Department dared to investigate then the Then we're going to punish fact. you. And then they're like, no, we're not racist. I hate yeah. You. Uh, you know how the Germans are. They're even, yeah. at, they're even at your you're neck going, you're starting or to at your Scottish feet. You're again. Yeah, the, the Germans. They're at your Deutsch. neck or they're at your feet. Deutsch. Yeah. So what happened with Ice Gruber? Right. He says, we're all racist. And the government says, then we will investigate you. And so what happens? That we're not racist. We made it up. It was a lie. Yes. So anyway, uh, the equity section. Ah. There's an equity section within the classics department. So again, English department. The wait, equity. Wait. The section people who invented the- democracy needed a equity section. Yeah. There's an okay. equity section. Well, it was right. on their website. So on their website, then they list various objectives related to diversity and equity, but they concede. The actions we take to promote equity and inclusion will not suffice to protect members of our community from discrimination and the effects of systemic racism, Mm -hmm. particularly anti-black racism. And it also says uh, it expresses solidarity with efforts to achieve equity in our nation and our world. What does any of this this mean? Equity. This is Rome, the culture that gave us the first first great constitutional republic, right? Equity. The first great constitutional republic, the Greeks invented but didn't like democracy, and they're the ones now have to be elected. I see Eisengruber, V will take down your institutions one at a time. V will cancel the classics, and nothing will be left but Uten and Thor and our <laughs> Aryan roots, and then there will be swastikas for everybody. Well, from the not actually German to Canada, eh? We have Very Nazi a, prof- in Canada. a professor at Mount Allison University in Sackville. Who is New mounting this Allison? Bra- what is going on in your country? Uh, we have a professor there who is suspended for claiming that Canada is not racist. You heard that she, right. She said not racist. So she's not going to teach at the university in the fall term because, you know, someone... Obviously sought her out and said, oh, oh, she hurt my feelings. So, so it you was literally our fa- our suspend Canada. You are literally, I'm going to use literally. that word. We've been accused of overusing that Not word, we. Katie. You. Yo, you as Not well. me. I literally. We are literally being <laughs> tagged for overusing the word literally. But Canada is literally suspending teachers now for simply saying that come on people canada is not a racist country and that's all it takes that's all it takes in a memo that was sent to faculty staff and student mount allison's communications director said that uh the professor rima uh her name is rima azar she's an associate professor of health psychology they said that she uh will be asked to take equity diversity and inclusion training at the university's expense of course so uh so that so that she can say that Canada is a racist Yeah, that's country? the point. That, that, that tells you right there. That's a tell, right? right? That the only thing you do learn in all that racist training is all white cultures are racist, right? So she's got to learn now that Canada, one of those free countries that takes in immigrants from all over the world, who's given rights and privileges to welcome people from all over the world, they're racist. And the fact that Rima dared to suggest that they weren't means she's got to go through reindoctrination programs. Look, look, can I say it right now? The United States of America is not fundamentally a racist country, period. It's not, never has been. Okay, do your damnedest. Now, Robert Hiscock, who is his cock. 
okay, is the mind. communications director for the university said over the past two months, an independent investigator has reviewed complaints from students alleging discriminatory conduct stemming from blog posts and student interactions. So again, they sought her out, yep. looked at her blog posts to find that she thinks Canada is not racist. Um, but Robert says the university has reviewed the report in which the investigator has made significant findings requiring action. <laughs> Uh, but because this report is confidential, we there are no examples. No one actually knows what's within Why it. Why is action needed for her on her own private blog saying what she thinks? Why yeah. is that? Why, well, why is it, it, action needed because of that? Because they dare to disagree with CRT morons. Action is needed. Good lord! I mean, listen to yourself. The woman may has an opinion. She has an opinion, for God's sake, and she dared to express it. It's not even necessarily a racist. It's not a mean thing. It's it's an ob it's a defensible statement. And you got to take action. Who are you? The Avengers? You sitting in your private lair? Are you are you Tony Stark? between bouts of drunkenness, waiting to put on the costume, the, the iron suit and fly to the rescue. Mount Allison's in trouble. Somebody says Canada's not racist. Let's, uh, let's get, somebody call the Hulk. Get Mike Ruffalo in here. Are you kidding me? He kinda knows the Avengers. Kinda do, kinda don't. Kinda. Mm. Anyway, there was an internal review that was launched back in February after, of course, again, students complained. Um, to the student union, actually, about the, like, so they went to the student union to, it's not from what she said in class, it's what she said on that blog, as we mentioned. Now, the union president, Jonathan Ferguson, said the complaints were not about any one post specifically. So, what, like, you can't even point to it. It's, not, it's just, you know. So you can't even point to it's something rather, that, yeah. quote, about what this professor was saying throughout her blog. Mm denying systemic racism in New Brunswick or in Canada, talking about BIPOC students in unkind ways, labeling Black Lives Matter a radical group. Which it is. And so, by the way, if, if the Black Lives Matter calls themselves a radical group, they call themselves that. They're for radical social justice. No, no, you can't say it. Only, you know, the ones who are in the inside can say it. You're not allowed. It's kind of like using the N-word. So, in so when, I, when, I say the following, when I say the following phrase... Black Lives Matter is a radical organization. The Avenger police at Mount Allison are getting their, their suits on. Yes. This is what happens. We got a code red. They're dressing. Somewhere, somewhere in the Western Hemisphere, some white person has mm -hmm. suggested that Black Lives Matter is radical, even though they define themselves that way. We must take action. <laughs> yes, but just for note, the professor's not one of those typical white males she actually was born in lebanon during a civil I, war i thought that name was not western time. and um she actually had to start or she has started at least a gofundme for legal defense to fight back against this because this is garbage as it you is. know one of the examples they actually gave from the blog um who sony raymond who's a saint thomas university graduate was mentioned in her blog um he had actually tweeted that disappointing to see a professor who's still ignorant to what racism is and will be using her power within the institution to uphold racist I ideologies racism is all caps is in canada racism is in uh, new brunswick you know what before any white professor at, at uh mount alice is allowed to say that she that that professor must spend six months in lebanon to see what real actual racism is and then let them come back and spout off yeah so here's what uh, she had actually said, she wrote, New Brunswick is not racist. Canada is not racist. We do not have systemic racism or systemic discrimination. We just have systemic naivety. Uh, uh, she's, better, she's a better woman than I am. Because I would have said. You're a bad woman. Yep, we know. Systemic, uh, systemical stupidity would have been my, yes. my claim. Um, because we're a young country and because we want to save the world. So that now means she can't teach. Yeah. And again, she has she grew up in Lebanon. Unlike most of those white professors who are attacking her and investigating her, she spent time in a genuinely racist culture in a genuinely racist part of the world. And that experience you are. Can I say this? You are canceling her lived experience. How's that using for their own words against them? You have canceled her own lived experience and replaced it with your Western lived experience. You are the ones should be silenced. You are the ones faculty and administration of Mount Allison. You're the ones who should be attacked by the Avengers and put in your place.
time for your dosable potion of real education. The immortal words of, words of Ronald Reagan, our a beautiful American 40th president, uh, the GIP. I remember I was a little, little boy in 1979. I was a young man. And I remember watching the news all of 1979 when Reagan was running for president. I was so young and, and uh, uh, indelible on my mind that they had so scared me to death as a little boy. I thought that if Ronald Reagan was elected president, there would be a nuclear war the next day. I was so traumatized when he won. And uh, thanks to him and watching him for eight years, I became a conservative. So uh, the, even then, the media was unbelievably bad. So take a look at some of these great quotes from the Gipper uh, as a way of thinking about remembering this man uh, and, and how, much, how wonderful it would be to have another one. Imagine somebody with the guts of Donald Trump, but with the eloquence of Socrates and the genial good nature uh, of, of our best spirit. So... Here's Reagan, quote, I have left orders, this is a joke, of course, I have left orders to be awakened at any time during a national emergency, even if I'm in a cabinet meeting. <laughs> How about this? How do you tell a communist? Well, it's someone who reads Marx and Lenin. How do you tell an anti-communist? It's someone who understands Marx and Lenin. That's a deep thought, um, Mr. Handy, because that's the problem. All the Marxists I work at, at the university, they completely misunderstand socialism. They don't get it. They think it's about equality and Bernie Sanders and vacationing in the Soviet Union and having three houses worth a million dollars. No, the people who understand communism are the ones who get it. Go to the next quote. Quite, quote, Live simply, love generously, care deeply, speak kindly, and leave the rest to God. Republicans believe every day is the 4th of July, but the Democrats believe every day is April 15th. That's exactly right. Tax day. For the liberals, everything is about funding godless agendas. For conservatives, it's about the glory of the American story, which is why the progressive left has to erase it. And the final quote for the day. Quote, sometimes when I'm faced with an atheist, I am tempted to invite him to the greatest gourmet dinner that one could ever serve. And when he, we had finished eating that magnificent dinner, I'd like to ask him if he actually was there, there if he actually believes there was a cook. All right, you just ate this best meal, the best meal of your life. Do you really think there's a cook in the kitchen or not? Or is it all a bunch of random accidents? All that good food get prepared that great way by random forces in nature. Ronnie, we miss you now more than ever. All right, just a quick reminder to please download our Freedom Project Media app. All you have to do is search for Freedom Project in your app store. Then you download it. And then you allow for notifications. And if you enjoy our content, please support us by joining the Patriot Club. Your one-time $99 tax-deductible donation allows us to bring you these crazy stories every single day. Simply visit patriotclub.us to get signed up. And as a little thank you, we will send you our signature tumbler. Now we want to take a moment to show some love to our Patriot Club members. And today, we're giving a shout out to Rob from Centennial, Colorado. Rob. Thank you for supporting us. Light up a big doobie for us, Rob, and that's going to wrap up this show. For Freedom Project, I'm Dr. Duke. She's Katie. Until next time, spleef on, my Colorado friends.